about. So how does one get rich? Through the law of multiplication. And what is the law of multiplication? Now, the law of multiplication is really about seed. The law of multiplication is about planting. Um, and then, after planting, getting a harvest. Now, I'm not talking about you uh, giving money to a church and then getting your money multiplied because that never works. Okay? It is good to give tight offerings, fast food and seed to the church. But I want you to be a person who gives with the right motive. If you give money to the church expecting some multiplication to happen, it does not work. The Bible says, even if you read Malachi chapter 4, that if you give your tithes, that God will open up the windows of heaven for you so that there's a blessing upon you. It didn't say so that there's money in your hands. God blesses you so that when you touch something with your hands, that thing turns into success and prosperity. But it's not some form of gambling that I put in a thousand dollars, so I'm expecting seven thousand dollars because of sevenfold anointing and stuff like that. It doesn't work like that. Okay, God is not a gambler. God is a farmer. He wants you to plant and then water and wait for the harvest. So I want to teach you how you can use the little you have in your hands and then multiply it so that this year you will never ever suffer financial lack ever again. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. So the kingdom of heaven, first I need you to know that heaven is a kingdom. A kingdom has a king and a king has those that work to ensure that the kingdom is successful and prosperous and a kingdom has an economy. So that means a kingdom has a budget. A kingdom has business activities. So people go out to do work. People go out to farm. People go out to transact so that the economy can run. There is cash flow. Cash coming in and cash going out. There is internal trade and international trade in the kingdom. So the Bible says for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So this man was going to a far country and he called his servants, those who are working for him, and he delivered to them his goods. Now, I want you to understand something, that when Jesus returned to heaven, having purchased for us salvation, having died on the cross, when he resurrected, thereby giving us salvation. Remember, salvation comes after resurrection. So when he resurrected and gave us salvation, he gave us instructions. He told us what to do before he returns. So if you look at the book of Luke chapter 19, he talks about occupy until I return. He said, do business until I return. Do the business of a banker, do the business of a lawyer, do the business of an industrialist, of an agronomist, do the business of a medical doctor, of a teacher, do the business of a preacher. Anything that you do, remember, your career is your highest calling. Your talent, your career, that thing you're extremely good at is your spiritual gift. It is your highest calling. Did you get that? This might sound controversial, but it's true. It's biblically true. Because not everybody's called to be an apostle. He said he gave some apostles, some evangelists, some teachers, some pastors, some prophets. Some, not all. Because everybody has their calling. So if your calling is like mine of being an apostle, then prosper in that calling. But if your calling is being an athlete, prosper. That's your ministry. You, you see, as you study the word of God and as you pray, especially as you pray in tongues, the anointing of God comes upon you and you become a great athlete, an athlete that can transform the world around you. Okay. If you're a medical doctor, then God will give you extraordinary wisdom in handling patients and getting them to be cured quickly. And that way you contribute to God's kingdom based on your expertise, your wisdom, which is also your calling, okay? So here you are, you could be a nurse, you could be a medical doctor, you could be a teacher, you could be anything in career. Remember, your career is your calling. Especially if your career is based on your natural abilities and talents, then that's your spiritual gift, okay? And that's how you will contribute to the kingdom of God. So God wants you to invest in your ability. Your first capital, ladies and gentlemen, when you're doing business, is your talent. Your very first capital is your talent or your skills, your ability, okay? Your first, your first 
capital. The first thing you need to start making money on the face of the earth is called your talent. This thing you are skilled in. Okay? There are people who are skilled in drawing. You know, they just grow up and they can draw. They can look at you and draw you accurately. They can represent your face. They know how to mix colors. There are people who are born and they just have certain things that they're extremely good at. That is your first capital. That is your first funding for success. If you take that to school, or if you take that to training, whichever way you look at it, and you become better and better at it, then your wisdom, which is your talent, is established because now you have understanding. You are going to school to understand why you know what you know. You get that? I'll give you my own example. I was born into a family where my mom and my father and my brothers and sisters were singers. So my natural talent was to sing and then to play musical instruments. It was natural. Now that was my wisdom. But I needed to have understanding with that wisdom. So I needed to go and study music and to study how to sing and how to play musical instruments, how to write musical notes, how to read musical notes. That's called understanding. Having got the understanding of my talent, I subjected that understanding to knowledge. In other words, knowing how to apply it in a way that would cause it to bring me money, which is what we call a career. I hope somebody's getting it. Yeah. So I had to start wondering, what is it that I can do with my singing and my instrument that can bring me money? Because I sang in church and played music in church. And usually churches uh, cause people to play voluntarily. They rarely pay people money. I think that's mostly because most churches are broke. If they uh, had a proper business plan, then they would pay every person that works within the church. Okay? Now, I started looking for ways and I thought, oh, you know, I could teach this instrument. I could teach singing. And if I taught somebody, I made money. So you see how I turned my talent into capital. Income. All right? income. I turned my talent into capital. And when I noticed that I was making a certain amount of money, I started thinking, what if I increased the number of people I taught? Apart from that, people started inviting me to play my saxophone in their weddings. And when I played, I think the first time they gave me rice and stew as, as my payment. You know, you, you have to start from somewhere. You have to start from zero, okay? Before you go to one and two and three and four. The Bible says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. So I remember playing in somebody's wedding and they gave me rice and stew. And they said, wonderful, you're a great man, enjoy rice and stew. And I said, thank you very much. And then I got other connections within that very same wedding. And the next weekend I was playing in another wedding and I was paid a certain um, small amount of money. They said, this is for your feel. Yeah. Sometimes they call it bus fare. And then I kept doing that. So my playing and my singing started manifesting capital. So the idea here is to be a good business person that can multiply this thing that has already promised that it can pay. 